Kai David Mark from ABC. Um, how much work has the squad done on preparing for the game against France? Uh, yeah, look, we've been, um, since we've been in, we've pretty much been working pretty hard on all the tactics, but we're, we're very focused on, uh, you know, what we're going to do and um, we believe in, in what we can do and we're going to play to our strengths and, yeah, we'll see if it's enough. Can you give us a few details? What specifically are you planning for? Oh, look, obviously they're a, a quality side, but, um, you know, we're, we're just going to go out there and, and take it to them like we do every game to every opponent and, um, yeah, we'll just see how we go. And personally, if you get the opportunity, what are your thoughts about, you know, taking on one of the best attacking teams in the world and one of the best players in the world in Buffett? Yeah, look, it's what you dream about as a kid, to be honest. Um, to be able to get this opportunity is, is once in a lifetime and... Um, I can pretty much speak for all the boys here that, you know, we're going to grab uh, the opportunity that we all have with both hands and, you know, not give anything away and um, give it the best crack we can. And, yeah, I think um, it's just an amazing uh, opportunity for everyone involved. Just last question, if I may, but just with Mbappé particularly, um, how would you go about marking him, dealing with him, stopping him? Oh look, I mean, you can you can maybe contain players like that for as best you can, but obviously they're going to have individual moments in the game where um, their quality uh, comes through. But if you can contain them as much as possible, that that's the goal. And if you limit them to as little chances as possible, then I think you'll go like a very long way in the game. Uh, Kai Joey Lynch from ESPN, over here, mate. Hello. Uh, how are you feeling, mate? Obviously, you came back and got some minutes with Hearts before the World Cup break, but Karen Benzema, Kylian Mbappe, they're not all due respect to the Scottish Premiership. They're a different level. How are you feeling physically to match up against them? Yeah, look, um, obviously, it's not been the most, um, I guess, the perfect run-in for myself, but um, I know that once I put my head down and get out there, that the fitness level is kind of... I'm not focused on that. I'm just focused on doing my job for the team. And um, obviously, once you get into the game and you've got the likes of Benzema and Mbappe around you, you don't have time to kind of think about how you're feeling and stuff like that. you just got to do your job and make sure that they're nullified as best as possible. So, um, I mean, I'm feeling strong anyway and, and very fit. Um, you know, the, the guys back at Hearts did a very good job at getting me back up to the level I need to be. And, um, yeah, I'm just excited to hopefully get out there and perform the best I can. And your journey, mate, you came into the Socceroos team relatively late in the qualification process, but you seem to have become a key member of it very quickly. A lot of the talk has been about you starting in these games at the World Cup. Just where's your head at right now with how things have gone for you? They seem to have gone so right for you in such a short amount of time. Yeah, it's happened pretty quickly, no doubt, but... Um... I'm just keeping my head down and, and whatever Arnie and the team need me to do, I'll be ready to do it. And, um, you know, I'm not focusing on um, if I play or not. I'm just focused on doing whatever job that's handed to me. And, yeah, that's pretty much it. And your potential centre-back partner against France, Harry Sutari, we didn't get a chance to see him when we were observed training last night. How's he coming along? Yeah, he's coming along very well. Um, you know, he's, he's obviously played. He's got a lot of minutes as well back at Stoke and... Um, yeah, he's looking fit and strong and he's looking very sharp as well. So, yeah, I can't wait to see him in action. Kai, Luke Doherty here at Fox Sports News. How are you going? Well done on getting back in time. The 90th minute substitute appearance that you made just before the, the squad was uh, announced, was that something that was deliberate to show Arnie that you did get some game time before the squad was announced? Uh, yes and no, I guess. Um, I was always kind of only going to play like 10 or so minutes in that game just due to um, like how my foot was and coming back and then obviously tie over it more into the Wednesday and the following Saturday. But uh, yeah, it was just a bonus to get out there and, um, you know, just being in and around the squad again was a good feeling and just to get used to that match day preparation and stuff like that again was, was all very helpful and, um, you know, it was good to show that I, I could be out there and that I was moving well and all that kind of stuff and then... Uh, yeah, just got out there again Wednesday and Saturday and felt good. The 90 against Rangers and then obviously the red against in your last game before coming here. <laughs> when you you saw the, the ref march back on and, and hand you that card, <laughs> what was going through your head? 
Uh, yeah, look, it was, it was a bit a uh, bit of shock, but um, look, at the end of the day, um, you know, it's a it's the decisions that get made, and you know, it's probably I put my hand up and I, I did something that you probably shouldn't do in the penalty box as a defender, and you know, I paid the price for it. But um, yeah, in the other games, I mean, I felt great and. Uh, it was just good to be out there getting minutes. It gives myself confidence that I can get through a 90 and, and that my foot's going to hold up well. So, yeah, I'm feeling good. Obviously, it's a shame to get red carded as it always is. But, um, yeah, you know, I've moved on from that now and I'm just focusing on what's coming up. Just the incident when you did score and then get injured. I mean, I'll talk about elation in terms of then into despair. How quickly did you know that you were in trouble? And then once you realised you are in trouble, how quickly did thoughts turn to perhaps not being here? Yeah, it didn't feel great when it happened at first. I knew something was wrong, but um, I thought maybe I'll try and run it off. And then after 10 or so more minutes, I was like, yeah, it's not right. And then um, obviously got the scan as soon as possible. And then, yeah, it was pretty much a time crunch from then on. But I just kept my head down and knew that like, I want to be here. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. So I just had to do everything in my power to get here. Um, Emma Kemp from The Guardian here. Um, you've sort of already touched on this um, a little bit already, but just in terms of your journey and how quick your rise has been, um, how, what do you do? Is there anything psychologically that you do to make sure that you're not overawed by situations such as playing against France at a World Cup? I think that's been kind of a little bonus and a positive that it's happened so quick. I haven't really had time to dwell on anything that's going on, so I've just kind of been one into another and I think I've just kept my head down and focus on each job that's come towards me and um, yeah, I try not to get sucked into everything that's happening like on the outside and um, I know that if I just focus and do my job that that hopefully will be like a positive for the team and um, yeah, I try not to get wrapped up in everything else, I just focus on what's in front of me. Uh, hi Kai, Joe Barton from the Daily Telegraph. Mate, Jason Cummings, can you uh, tell me what your first impressions were when he arrived at the Mariners last year? Yeah, I didn't know really what to expect. Um, you know, you've seen, obviously, the internet, you, you're not safe anywhere, and I've seen a few things about him, but, um, yeah, he was pretty much polar opposite of what's been said on Twitter and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, I just think he's a top bloke and he's a hard worker and... Um, you know, he's done extremely well to get to where he is now and to be included in this squad's pretty amazing. Um, he shows what he can do when he come in January last year to the Mariners and oh, this year maybe, yeah, this year. Um, and he's just kicked on since then, since coming to Oz and um, yeah, the boys love him and he's just a great character to have in the change room, you know, he's always having jokes and stuff like that and he's just a great bloke to have around you. He definitely seems like a bit of a like a rare character, a rare unit, we might say, um, in Australia. Are you telling me that there is that what we see is not exactly what we get? He, he's a little bit different behind the scenes, or is he still that kind of crazy, crazy figure? Oh, look, I don't, I, I haven't seen that crazy side that everyone's um, spoken about. I guess so. I don't, I don't know what he was, but up to in the UK. But um, yeah, he's really showed who he is and how much he cares about football and how much he wants to get to the top level and. He's just a hard worker like the rest of us and like he likes to have a joke and that, but he's a, uh, he's a good professional and I think getting here just shows how well he's done. Kai, Mark Schwartz here from Optus Sport. Um, 13th of June, you talked about your journey, how quick it's gone, keep your head down. 13th of June, qualify for a World Cup, your first one. How's it feel now you're here on the ground and it's real and it's in touching distance? Yeah, it's pretty... Uh, like you say, it's real, but it still feels surreal, if that makes any sense. Like, um, still sinking in at the moment. Um, you know, we were in club football still just a weekend ago, so it's all happened pretty quick towards getting here. But um, it's just one of those pinch yourself moments, um, as you would know. Um, it was my first one. Like, I can't even explain it. Um, you know, I made my debut in June, and it's November, and it's had a World Cup. Like, it's just been so quick and yeah it's almost lost for words to be honest. Um, Takai, David Wiener from Keep Up. Um, I might just follow up from Mark's question given it's 
I can't really follow up asking a question after Mark Schwartz uh, asking you about that. Um, but can you tell us about growing up watching the Socceroos, perhaps watching Mark and what it means to now be following in their footsteps right here uh, at a World Cup? Yeah, like I just said, it's I'm pretty much speechless to be honest. You know that 2005 journey was pretty much the most like iconic football memory in, in my lifetime to be honest with you, and that's really the moment that set off me wanting to to get to this moment. And um, it wasn't as dramatic, but we recreated somewhat our own moment as well in June. But um, yeah, to be able to follow in the steps of those guys that set the path was it's pretty special and. Um, yeah, you know, hopefully we can do them proud in the rest of the country as well. One more question, Carl. You just reminded me. Redders, the grey wiggle, have you given him a stick for that or not? There's been a fair bit of stick, to be honest. But I thought it was pretty cool when he got on, on TV with the wiggles and started singing the songs. And I thought it was classic because, you know, I watched that growing up as well. So I thought it was great. <laughs> um, just one more on, on your journey. Um, there's a great contingent here from the Mariners that are currently playing at the Mariners and, of course, a great cohort that's come uh, from the Mariners previously. Um, how proud of you are you of that? Uh, and, and is there a sense of pride amongst you guys here together of what that club has provided to the Socceroos? Yeah, of course. And I think they should be extremely proud of uh, the players that they've had developed throughout the years and that have obviously gone on to have amazing careers as well. And... Um, you know, all, all of us that are here um, that have been with the Mariners or still there are still thriving to, you know, kick on and do, do them proud as well. And they've laid such a good platform for young players there, myself included, younger and coming through now as well. And, you know, Jay, since he's got there's really come in to the spotlight. And I think that they've just done an amazing job with getting young boys in and, you know, turning them into such great players. And given them a chance at a further in their career and you know it's good to see that um, so many people representing the nation as well that's coming out of such a small uh, small team as well and in such a small area it's a really family environment so everyone just gets around each other pretty much and it's just great to see so many of us involved with that club at some point in our careers um, you know be able to reflect on that and and you know talk about what our times are like here uh, yeah on the coast. Kai, Dave Davidovich from Keep Up. Um, just wanted to, to expand on that. Can I just get a line on Garang Kual? Um, when he made his senior debut last year, did you imagine that uh, you'd see him here uh, in the Socceroos World Cup squad? And can you just sort of tell us a little bit about him? You would have obviously come up against him a bit at, at training, what we, can, um, what we can expect. Yeah, look, we knew he was um, obviously a good player, but the, he's had a pretty wild ride as well, like um, going out in the All-Star game against Barcelona and tearing it up. He was just doing that all year and he just has no fear whatsoever and, um, you know, he was doing it in like A-League and then comes on against Barcelona and does that and then, you know, he came on in New Zealand as well and looked at danger every time he gets the ball and that, that's just his game, isn't it? He's just young, exciting, raw. Um, yeah, he's got a few amazing and very exciting years ahead of him, that's for sure. Kai, Vince Regari from the Sydney Morning Herald, mate. Um, just keen to know what... Obviously, it's about the here and now at this World Cup, but Rani's refreshed the ranks of the Socceroos pretty well in the last 12 months. A lot of blokes have come through the Ollie Roos. There's a lot of guys who are sort of 25 and under, have the opportunity to play at multiple World Cups now. You're probably in that category. Guys like Garang, you know, you know yourself, others, are you feeling pretty confident about you know the future of the Socceroos and some of the guys who are going to get the opportunity to show what they can do at this tournament? Yeah, I think the, you know, the next few years are very exciting, but obviously we've got a job to do here and um, we're just focused on the now kind of thing. I mean, we've got such a great squad and lots of depth as well, so everyone's pushing for a spot and I think, um, you know, we, we've, we're just going to focus on this ne the next coming weeks and the next few games and um, I guess we can worry about the future later. Guys, Steve Lark and AOP. I just, um, I know you're probably sick about talking about the foot, but was there any stage where you thought you wouldn't actually get fit enough to be, to be here? Yeah, pretty much. Life the whole time. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I had to come back super fast and there's always a risk of 
um, pushing the limit a bit too much and and I didn't really have time for even a tiny little setback where it's three or four days, you know, so um, like hats off to everyone involved for getting me back to, you know, a, a playing level and um, yeah, now that I'm, I'm fit and ready, like I'm just getting fitter and stronger every day and sharper as well, so yeah, come uh, next Tuesday I'll be ready. Is there any, any I mean physically you're fine, but any mental hangover, is it gone from the back of your mind? Nah, it's gone from the back of my mind now, yeah. I'm, I'm 100% ready to go and um, yeah, if I'm, if I'm chosen, then yeah, I'll be ready. G'day, Kai. Ben's from Channel 10. I'm just wondering if you guys have talked or put any thought into the champion's curse. You know, the champions in the last few World Cups have not gone that well. France are the defending champions. They seem to be losing a player a day to injury. How much are you hoping that curse is real this time around? Yeah, I mean, it's a it's an odd stat, that's for sure, but we're not looking too into it, to be honest. Um, they're obviously a quality side, and um, we're just going to go out there and play to our ability and not try and wrestle on the laurels of that stat, to be honest. Um, yeah, we're just going to go out there and, and give it the best shot we can. And, um, yeah, I mean, we've got a great group of boys here, and we're all fighting for each other, so we'll see how we go. Kai, I know we've had a lot of serious questions, but we have been hearing from your teammates over the past few days about the barista that you've got access to here at the Aspire Academy. I'd like to hear from you, who's taken the piss the most with their orders and the like and their barista privileges in the squad? I won't name names, but I'll give you a state. Please name names. I'll give you a state. Victorians. <laughs> uh, as a Victorian, yeah, I'll cop it. <laughs> Just, just while we're on the non-serious questions, who's your favourite Wiggle? <laughs> Redders. <laughs>